Hi, fashion dolls. It is Motivation Monday, June 13th, and welcome to another new episode of Style by Stevie. We have a very special, fresh new face joining us today, and you might have seen him in a couple films such as The Love Coach and Broken Covenant. I am so excited for our very special guest today, Stephen Connor, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys all are doing awesome. Happy Monday. It's been an amazing weekend. I'm just rejuvenated and recovering from that Bath and Body Works semi-annual sale. Today is the last day, 11.95 on candles. No, they are not paying me to promote it. I wish they was though, but I love me some Bath and Body Works. That's why I've been so rejuvenated because it really has been helping me, you know, stay in tune with myself. I believe in self-care and I've been doing a lot of self-care so that's why I'm just over here beaming glowing and special thanks to our makeup artist and beauty contributor Melanie Nalamai Bridges for making sure that we're right so without further ado let me share this live with Steven so that we can get this interview started ladies and gentlemen I'm so excited it is Monday it is back to the grind oh my goodness I hope you all are doing wonderful and amazing as I am we're going to get into some things in this interview here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so excited. Super, super excited. So, what have you guys been up to during the weekend? Um, me, like I said, I went to the Bath & Body Works semi-annual sale. And it's a good deal. Like, you can't miss. Um, I got me some perfumes. I got some body lotion. And then I got some candles. Ladies, Gentlemen, everybody, Father's Day will be here before you know it. So make sure you go and get the man in your life something special. Take advantage of this. Blessings to you, sis. Much love. Thank you, Karma. Mwah. Thank you, my love. And without further ado, let's welcome our very special guest, Mr. Stephen Connor, ladies and gentlemen. Give me a second. I'm looking for him in the queue so that I can add him in. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, what's up? Welcome to the dollhouse. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. It is such a pleasure to have you here. Thank so you, before you. we get into this interview, I'm going to tell you guys a funny story. And me and Steven mm -hmm. had conversations behind the scenes on this. Um, yeah. The interview, we went back and I created the flyer for the interview. And I had the date for tomorrow, which would have been Bonzel Scott's day to do an interview with me. So we got the dates mixed up. It was pretty funny. And I said, mm -hmm. Stephen, how can you let me forget this? And yeah. he, he liked it. He let him put a little heart beside it or whatever. And I said, okay, <laughs> this is not our interview date. Because I had to go back and check my calendar and confirm yeah. it. And he put the 13th. So it was pretty funny. Yeah. That's my part. So yeah, apologize. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> you <good. laughs> Oh my goodness. So before we get into this interview, how has 2022 been for you thus far? Because I know we've had some ups and downs. Numbers mm -hmm. are going back up, if you know what I mean, those numbers and mm -hmm. just been so much happening in the world, you know, right. shutdowns and things, you know, restrictions. How has 2022 been for you thus far? So far it's been actually pretty been pretty good for me you know i've been doing auditions booking a couple things you know just trying to stay healthy you know keeping my distance and everything you know but actually got vaccinated this year so that's a pretty good thing for me so yeah it's been it's been awesome the same here the same here oh, taking yeah. all precautions i know when this oh, thing yeah. first hit, what was it in 2020 2021 um mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to take the series. I was a little scared at first, but I went right. on and I did it. You know, oh, mm -hmm. I completed all three parts. So oh, yeah. I've got my test and everything. Never had COVID. So yeah, thank yeah, God yeah. for that. Thank God for great health, making sure that oh, I'm yeah. a lot of vitamins, drinking a lot of water. And my OCD has definitely kicked in at an all time high. My brother mm -hmm. and my father both served in the military. So everything for yeah. them has to be pitch perfect clean, like a spot can't be in no place or nothing. So right. I know for me, I've been wiping down, sanitizing everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah definitely. Welcome, welcome. If you're just joining in, we are here with Stephen Connor, and we're about to get into this interview. So tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about yourself. How did you get your start into acting? Um, I first started back in like 2012. I was trying to get into it, but, you know, I was actually young and I wasn't really in the right mind space, so I had to deal with all the fake agencies trying to 
you know, get money from me and everything. Hey, y'all, hey. <laughs> and so I started doing, like, smaller little projects, but, you know, with work and everything, trying to get off and dealing with the managers, they, they just won't let me get off. So I ended up quitting for a few years. And then maybe, like, maybe, like, Three or four years later, I tried to get back into it. I started doing the background work just to see how things was on set and everything. But then I started this electrical job and I started traveling. So I had to call it quits again for like for like two or three more years. And then finally, you know, I got back into it. I went and got my training, got my head shots in, and everything just been rolling from there. It's been okay. smooth sail so far. So who's some of your favorite actors that you look up to? And if you could collaborate with any, who would your dream trio be? You can choose three actors. Three actors? Uh, I, I will say Wesley Snipes, of course, Denzel Washington. Um, and I actually like Leonardo DiCaprio. He's a, he's a great actor. I study all three of those. Yeah. Great choices yeah, that I've gotten. In the past, I've gotten Will Smith. I've gotten Denzel Will Smith. and oh, a yeah. few others on my platform. But I oh, yeah. You, you got to have Denzel in the list. For sure. And and speaking of Denzel, congratulations to Jennifer. While it slipped my mind, I posted in my stories. Congratulations to Jennifer Hudson on being a part of that ego category. That's mm -hmm. going to be the next part of my question for you. Do you see yourself in that category alongside uh, Whoopi Goldberg? And just if you in the future in your career, because I believe in manifestation. Do you see yourself right there sitting next to them in the big league, Denzel, all of them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely see myself sitting there. You know, I manifest every day. You know, I meditate. You know, and I do all that, you know. Got my, uh, I got my vision board I look at every day. And, you know, I say, I say all my uh, words every day, you know. That's what it's all, all right. about, and manifesting your dreams. It's funny you said vision board because I had to take a peek over there at mine and oh, yeah. I check mine <laughs> off every day and everything that I put on there, goals, ambitious, mm -hmm. things that I wish to accomplish going mm -hmm. into 2022. It's now coming full circle. So it's always yeah. good. And I put little quotes on my vision board to kind of get me through the day as well too and help me oh, yeah. just stay grounded. Exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So yeah. we're gonna go down the list here through some of your through some of your um catalog of works. You've got some good acting credits here. You mm -hmm. did the love coach, you did mm -hmm. Broken Cup, the movie, and you mm -hmm. did moving through it among so many others. Which role that you portrayed or worked in, in your career holds a special place to your heart? And which character could you resonate with the most? Oh, which character? Um I would say my character I did in Broken Covenant would be the best one I did. Yeah. And then everybody on set was just great. You know, we all had great chemistry. Everybody got along with the, the cast plus the crew. You know, you don't really get that a lot. So it was that was a great project to work on there. So what is your passion word? What is your word that fuels you and gets you going? Because I know in this time right now, everybody needs hope with everything that's going on in the world. I don't even have to get into half of it. It's a lot going on. So what gives you hope? What is that one word that gives you hope? I know for me, my since I'm a Scorpio, I would have to say fearless would be mine. And yeah. it's because I've mm -hmm. overcome so many challenges, you know, in this world to be where I'm at now at this point in my life. And I can say I've been happier than I've ever been. So what is one powerful word that you use that fuels you to keep you going? Oh, one powerful word. Uh, uh, I would just, I would say, you know, greatness, you know, something like that. I, I tell myself every day, you, you're great. You're powerful, you know? And that is key. Every, everybody needs oh, to look yeah. in the mirror. And I tell people this all the time. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with going back and having a conversation with yourself and talking to God. Right. There's nothing right. wrong with it. It all makes us human, and it's about mm -hmm. human nature at the end of the day. So we have yeah. to find that common ground of what works for us in due time. Right. And what works for me is 100%, you know, talking to God every morning. If you mm -hmm. believe, hopefully, if you believe in something, you fall for anything. So make sure you stay in tune with who you are, especially when right. it's 
And exactly. for you, because I've seen so many people become alienated, you know, and forget where they come from and, and who mm-hmm. they are and, and the ones that help them. Like, I always hold on to my friends, my childhood friends that have been there with me from the beginning. Shout out to mm-hmm. my girlfriend. I know she's watching. Always mm-hmm. supporting me. And those are the people that you need. How important is a support circle for you? I think it's uh, very important. You know, I try to keep a small circle circle around. I don't like too mm-hmm. big of a crowd, but I, I like just maybe like four or five people around me to just, you know, motivate me and push me. And especially with what they're doing, you know, they, they also got to be successful. Yeah. And, you know, we always, you know, we help each other out and just push each other. So I think it's very important to have that. Absolutely. One hundred mm-hmm. percent agree with that. Yeah. So what would be that one dream role? If you could choose a dream role as any character, you think it's, I know for you as an actor, you're most fascinated. What would be that dream role? Like, for example, I had one actor on my platform say, oh, I would love to be a part of the Marvel books, you know, mm. first black superhero, the next black superhero. You know, Black Panther mm-hmm. was the big piece, but Chadwick, God rest his soul. Oh, yeah. What would be definitely. the dream role for you? Mm. Oh, I actually, I want to be like a, a, a action star. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> something like that. You know, I want to be out there running and jumping off jumping off buildings and stuff like that. That's, that's a dream role for me right there. <laughs> sort of like a James Bond type. James, yeah, oh yeah, that. James Bond for real. Yeah, the Black James Bond. We do need that. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. that would be monumental because um, there were talks that Idris Elba would they wanted Idris Elba to do it, but oh yeah, you, I heard you know about that. That's oh, yeah. that's a whole different conversation. Oh yeah, it is. <sighs> so for you as a black man, for you being mm-hmm. a black actor and a black man in general. How do you define your strength for yourself as a black? My strength? Uh, how would I describe my strength? Um, I just, you know, I just try to stay focused, you know, and just keep pushing. You know, I never try to get discouraged. I never let anything let me down. I never, you know, let what nobody says about me bother me. You know, just, I just got to keep pushing, you know? That's how I that's how I stay moving, you know? Exactly. And yeah. I remember just not too long ago, I did a whole, when I did my interview lineup, um, it was mm-hmm. all, I did this um, It mm-hmm. was all Black. And some have done Broadway, and some have not done Broadway. And right. they've already been live filmed. So, when we talked about mental health and just, you know, finding that strength, they were very vulnerable and they opened up about it. So I did that on purpose because, of course, mm-hmm. it's easy for me uh, as a Black woman to have this conversation with other women, which I have had on my other show outside of Style by Stevie called Girl, Let's Talk. And it was a panel mm-hmm. of um, four women and we talked about mental health, colorism, and so many things that we go through in the industry. But mm-hmm. I commend you 100% as a Black for you coming and saying, you know, that's that's the same thing basically that they were saying as well too, is that we have to have strength. And right. that some black men, you know, can't show vulnerability. They can't they were raised okay. not to show emotion. They you know, right, don't right. cry, it'll make you look weak, it'll make you look you know, but mm-hmm. strength. It's it's nothing wrong with showing that side, showcasing right. that side. Right, right. Exactly. Definitely. So kudos to all of those actors to join the Dupart and um, Dupanti and also Renaissance Jones, who's another one that I spoke about. Um, he did a film called uh, When Men's, Men Hurt Too. I think mm-hmm. it's Men Hurt Too, where it talks about Black men, and the challenges that they go through in life and mental health and mm-hmm. being such a big thing within the Black community and us continuing to sweep it up under the rug for so long. So right. We come in, all of those brothers were coming on the show and being vulnerable and speaking out on it because not all the time is it done. Right. Oh, all right. My guest tomorrow, Bonzel Scott, ladies and gentlemen, he has a question for you. Do you okay. think the audition process has been harder since COVID? All self tapes and not really no in person audition. What are your takes on that? Oh, you, well, hold on. You said what, what again? Uh, Bonzel wants to know 
Do you think the audition process has been harder since COVID hit and all self tape and not really no in person audition? So, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, you know, I, I actually don't really have a problem with the uh, self tape auditions, you know. Um, but since I've been actually doing it, that's all I've really been. I only did maybe like two in person. So, I've only dealt with mostly the self tapes, but no, I, I, it's not been really hard for me at all, actually, you know. It's been, been pretty cool. Mm. And yeah. I'm gonna add on something that Vaughn, I'm glad you asked that question, Vaughn, because in the back of my mind for artists and performers I hear, and I've interviewed so many, I asked them, do you ever miss that feeling of being in person? You know, because mm -hmm. for us as entertainers, as, as creators, as content creators in general that are in this field, it's like you, you kind of miss the feel of the audience. You feed off of their energy. Mm -hmm. um, um, and this was at the Billboard Music Awards. It was in Vogue, in Vogue, the girl group. And they, they were asked, did you ever miss that feeling of being able to perform in front of an audience? And I know for mm -hmm. actors that are used to doing Broadway and things like that, it's a whole different, like you, you feed off of the audience's energy. Like it gives you oh, a yeah. rush in a way. Right. And that's a completely different experience than just being in a closed in an auditorium where it's just like maybe two or three people and not a full stadium. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had something experienced like that while you're on set where it's just like, okay, everything is limited. I want to go see my co-stars, but I got to stay right here. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely had that feeling before. Yeah. And that's, yeah, it's for a lot. It's, it's very, it's, it's kind of awkward, but we have to do it for safety purposes. I've even seen where... Right. Actors are taping on set, you know, shows for CBS and other networks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the show The Queen Latifah is on the, the Equalizer. I've seen, you know, her share here on IG. What mm -hmm. is it like, you know, being on set when this has happened and taping shows? But they right. get the job and they do a marvelous job. Pandemic oh, yeah. has been brutal on live performance. Yes. And this has come up oh, on yeah. the performance news. She's a singer, songwriter in the New York area. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I have family there in New York, so I know about the shutdowns and how it's deeply affected a lot of people, not just in the music industry, but in the acting and directing world. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But some people have gotten back in, gotten back into performing and things, and I'm just like, how? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to stick to doing virtual, because I know oh, yeah. a lot of my guests that have asked, you know, when I set up interviews with them, um, mm -hmm. Are you going to do it virtual or in person? And I say, no, it's going to be virtual. You don't have to travel. And I don't want to right. put anybody at risk for anything. Safety, right, personal, right, right. Oh yeah, everything. Because oh, yeah. it's it's crazy times out here right now, and it's like, it is, Lord, it is. when is this thing going to be over? And it's you know, oh, we yeah. never predicted this. Yeah, it's it's never going to be the same again. It's, it's I think it's here for for good. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And. My, speaking of this not being over, has it affected mm -hmm. you with balancing out work and being able to spend time with your family? Because I know for you as an actor, it's a lot. Like, how do you find that balance, you know, with family and set life? Oh, man, it's, it's actually been pretty... Uh, what do you say? Do you feel something? Yeah, you know, I haven't seen some of my family in a while now. I actually lost uh, someone from COVID, right. so... You know, it's definitely been kind of crazy with people not wanting to want you to come to their house and this and that. So it's definitely been pretty crazy. Do you feel like this is any <laughs> No, nah, I don't yeah. feel hesitant. <laughs> and it's it, it's def for all the the essential workers out here. I know I I literally my heart breaks for them because mm -hmm. it's like. You want to go home and see your family, but you have to stay in another part of the house. You're coming home from the hospital or working or wherever the numbers are going up and you have yeah. to sit behind that glass and just, it's, oh, it's yeah. nothing better. It, if it's one thing that I, I kind of miss and I want to cherish is that human touch, that communication, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. being able to hug my family members. Like right. just the other day, I, when I went out, I saw my girlfriend um, mm -hmm. that I went to school with. Me and her were very, very good friends. And she was out with her family, and I wanted to hug her, but I'm just like, man. Right, right, right. 
it, it's, it's crazy. That communication. And I, I want to be right. able to hug and kiss my grandmother. I still, exactly. I can, you know, but we still have to be cautious. Um, right, you do. And I'm able to see my mom and my dad. My brother came down yesterday, mm -hmm. him and his girlfriend. He's like my little baby sis. So I was mm -hmm. able to see them and hug them and stuff. We were safe, of course. Everybody is safe. But right. it, we're, we're scary times. It's just like, it wow. Not know do I. This book, I mean, right, yeah. right, and then some people they don't they have it and you, they don't even have symptoms. You never know. Scary. I've had four family yeah. members take pause, and yeah. I'm just like, ever since then, I've been in my own little bubble. Mm -hmm. Some like on the more I know Memorial Day uh, was not too long ago, and they my cousin she put together a little cookout, and my mom and my dad went and they took the pups with them as well too, and they asked, um, "Are you going?" I said, oh, no, mm -hmm. no, no, I, <laughs> I'll stay here, I'll stay here. Um, right. And my mom was like, well, she's, you know, she's a little, yes, I am a I'm a big germaphobe, big germaphobe. Mm -hmm. Ever mm -hmm. since this thing has picked up, I've been sanitizing the doorknobs, wiping mm -hmm. the doorknobs. I don't care if it's a hairbrush, <laughs> a shampoo bottle. I don't care if it is a cup of a glass of wine. I will be sanitizing everything. That's how bad I am. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Gotta be. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially yeah. in these times. So for right. you, when you're not on set working, what is Steven doing? What does Steven enjoy when he's not on set? Oh, I just like to spend time with my kids. I take them out to the park, to the water park, we do things like that, go out to eat, play video games with them, board games, have a movie night, things like that for the most part. And sometimes, you know, I go out, hang out with my friends. Things yeah, you like need that, that time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got to have that time. Definitely and, you know, being able to celebrate with the children. Mm -hmm. I know from a lot of parents, it's been difficult for this mm -hmm. as well, too. School right. is back to being open. And I kind of mm -hmm. have some thoughts that I don't, I wish they wouldn't send the babies back to school. But parents. I've mm -hmm. seen what they kind of had to go through. They kind of had to dig back into their old book bags and kind of go back to school themselves and be the teacher oh, to the yeah, children. Yeah, yeah, that was that was crazy yes. when we did that <laughs> at the at home thing. Oh man, it virtual was crazy. Homeschooling. That yeah. virtual, wow, yeah, it was it was hectic. And I had I've three had kids in here trying to trying to do <laughs> three different levels of oh, man. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, you kind of had to tap back into things that you. It's been like. Ooh, you look at it and it's just like, it's been a while since I've done this. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then some of the stuff they teach is different from when we went to school. So, I'm like, wait, wait, how are y'all doing this? <laughs> completely, hey. It's completely different. So, yeah. I thought that was a more safer, more efficient way to do it. Mm -hmm. All right, Fashion Dolls. So, we're going to get into two games with our very special guest, Steven, here. And then we're going to take some questions from the audience. It's such a great interview and conversation we're going to keep it going so the first one is called the rapid five and steven has to tell us five things that he can't live without it can be just <laughs> like a journal for example goals you know that you wish to accomplish it can be family it can be your favorite football team it can be anything what would be in your top five things that you can't live without? top five things i would say water <laughs> uh mm -hmm. My phone. <laughs> um, uh, I would say my kids. Um, uh, what else? What else? TV. And I would say music. I love some music. And there's a yeah. question from you from our girl, Liz. She wants to know, what does a good day look like for you? A good day? Uh, a good day is uh, me spending time with my kids, of course, taking them out to the park, coming back home, you know, doing things with them. That's, that's a good day for me is just spending time with the kids. Absolutely. And and cherishing yeah. those moments. Um, not oh, yeah. too long ago, I've seen everybody posting about the prom and graduation. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of those moments for right. parents watching. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. 
because they go off to college, it's it's bye bye. I, yeah, I, I don't have to right? have nieces and nephews, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you'll get the you'll be like empty nest syndrome. Like I kind of miss my baby a little bit. I kind of miss my child a little bit. <laughs> well, trust me. Yes, I have nieces and yeah. nephews. I, I, Auntie Stevie knows all too well. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the next thing we're going to get into is called his thoughts. And this is where I call out the name of some actors and Stephen gives me one word to describe each actor. And we're going to go down the list. Here. I'm going to shuffle up a bit. And the first actor or actress we're going to start off with is Viola Davis. Oh, Viola Davis. Ooh, she is phenomenal. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, next, we have Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. Oh, let's see. One word for him. <sighs> let's see. Forrest Whitaker. I think he's 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 great. He's he's a great actor. I'm gonna say he's great. All right. Yeah. Lord Jesus, I, I this man deserves so much throughout his career. Mm -hmm. Rest his soul, Michael K. Michael Hay oh Michael Hay Rook. Wow. Say extraordinary. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the next one is Angela Bass. Ooh. Powerful. She is very powerful. Yeah. And last but certainly not least, Stephen Conn. <laughs> ah, Stephen Connor. Ah. ah, what could I say about me? Hmm. I'm gonna put myself in the category of being great. And that you are. Oh you yeah. Are. Oh yeah. Amazing that. And yeah. I see so much more in the horizon for you, Mr. Group. And it's, it's more so it. manifestation. So right. how important is manifestation to you? Because I know for me, and me and Liz, and Marcos, and my, my, I call them my dolls. I call them my, my viewers, my supporters, my fashion dolls. Mm -hmm. um, talk about manifestation all the time. How important is it to you? I believe that whatever you put out in the universe, it will come full circle. So oh, yeah, it definitely will. It's really important to do that. You know, whatever you... You think and say it's it's gonna come. You know the universe is very powerful. It hears you, and you you gotta you gotta stick with it. Do it every day, and just don't stop. You gotta be persistent with it. Manifestation is real. It's powerful. It's it's, it's definitely out there. Whatever Absolutely. you speak will come. Yes, and me, I also write things down as well. So I'm a big writer. Like I'm yeah. write. I'm always writing something down. It can be a goal. It can be anything. But mm -hmm. I feel like when you put it on paper and you do everything possible to make it come to life, mm -hmm. it happens. So it does, it's, it's, it does. for me, it's like telling your own story. And actors, us as the journalists, the talk show hosts, we all tell our story. You know, mm -hmm. for the voice, there are people out here who don't feel comfortable with using their voice. And we could go on and tell our story and then it can inspire the next person to come out and tell the story like, wow, they right, went through right. something that I've been through. And I'm mm -hmm. not alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. Oh, yeah. So my last question for you, well, last two questions are, because I'm going to mm -hmm. wait to see if we have any more questions from the audience as well while we're waiting on that, uh, mm -hmm. is where does Steven see himself in the future? Because I know I'm always planning ahead. I'm always, you know, sitting and thinking. And sometimes people are like, well, I'm a deep thinker. And mm -hmm. my thing is, there's nothing wrong with being a deep thinker. It, you know what it means? It means it's human nature. It means that you are human, you know? Mm -hmm. And you think about what comes to you in the life. What could happen in the next life? And how mm -hmm. do you choose to use this with your legacy? That's my question. Um, uh, I definitely see myself as a leading man and the big time movies, of, of course, you know. I also see myself producing and directing my own films, you know, and helping out other actors that's gonna come up as me. Um, 
And what what was the second question you said? Your legacy. How do you choose to leave and embark on your legacy? Because we know, you know, mm-hmm. our time here is temporary. So many people oh, yeah. went on and that are actors, um, for example, Betty White and so many others. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. So I legacy. Definitely, you know? I definitely want my kids to live on my legacy, you know. I want them to become successful actors or just working in the film period, you know, directing, producing, just doing anything to keep the legacy going, you know. So I'm definitely going to pass it on to them to, to hold that for me. Absolutely. And before I get to my last question, we got some mm-hmm. questions for you from Liz. What is a okay. powerful color that you wear and how does it make you feel? And is there an item from your childhood that you still have? If so, then why? My powerful, actually, my favorite color is like navy blue. So I've always loved that color ever since I was a kid. Um, it actually, it, it makes me, you know, it makes me feel good, you know, boosts my confidence when I step out. And item for my childhood, I don't think I have an item for my childhood, actually. Yeah, I don't think I, I, I kept anything for my childhood. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. I think that answers some of the questions. My yeah. last one is, what advice would you give to someone who's studying to become an actor? You said you also want to get into directing, producing mm-hmm. as well, before we get to that part. But what advice would you give to someone who's looking to say, okay, I want to be just like Steven, or mm-hmm. you know, the next actor, the next actor, the next actor? I would say definitely first get yourself into some classes and Get, get your training in. You definitely you got to have that training and, and keep on training. You know, I'm, I'm still training myself. Um, definitely get some headshots, professional headshots. You know, get some content. You got to build that resume. That um, You got to build that demo reel up, you know, to be able to get you an agent and to, you know, to help you to get to where you want. But, you know, that's pretty much it. Just, just, just study. Just keep on studying and, and keep it up, and you'll you, you'll see some success. Absolutely, one hundred percent. And there's so much knowledge out there. Mm-hmm. There's books that can help you. you can oh reach yeah, out books. Mm-hmm. And there's so much information out here on the internet. You know how to become mm-hmm. an actor. Yeah. Forcing. Um, I know that there was one actor that I interviewed, and he was giving courses virtually. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh and yeah and go and take a course with him. So it's different things you can use. Right. And hopefully oh, yeah. that would be able to help you as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. All right, fashion dolls. And if we don't have any more questions, this concludes our interview. Special thanks to actress Steve Connor. It was right. such a pleasure having you here in the dollhouse. Oh, I had such you. a great thank time with you. Your energy, your aura is amazing. And I go off the vibe. So I definitely mm-hmm. would love to be back again in the future. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I, thank you. I love to be back. All right, Fashion Dolls. Joining me tomorrow, we have actor Vonzel Scott. And we got a supermodel coming this week. Her name is Sydney Webb. Mm-hmm. Is she related to Veronica? Let's find out sometime <laughs> Wednesday. I love you all. And all make right. sure you guys can say shout-outs to my girl, Blue Haze Clothing, if you're in the Atlanta area. Please go and hit her up. She's got some hot pieces for my lady out there. So definitely yeah. get it while it's hot. I love you all, fashion dolls, and you guys all take right. care and have a blessed prospect. All right. Have a good one. You too.